Holden. Now joining us to discuss is retired Brigadier General in the U.S. Air Force, Blaine Holt, once again, and Senior Fellow for America First Policy Institute, Fred Flights. Fred, let's start with you here. I know you've been talking a lot about this here. We have these Houthi rebels. They're going crazy over there with these drones. 14 just on Saturday, we heard. Why does the Biden administration take more of a defensive stance on this and not go on the offensive here? Well, let's talk about the Houthis. They control about a third of Yemen. They're an Iranian-backed terrorist group. The Wall Street Journal says today they are one of the world's most dangerous terrorist groups because they can they have ballistic missiles, anti-ship cruise missiles. They have attack drones, and some of these missiles have a range of a thousand miles. They can shoot across the Saudi Peninsula. They can hit Israel. Now, the real issue here is that these attacks have taken place since just after the October 7th Hamas attacks. At least nine ships have been attacked in the Red Sea since that time, and the U.S. has not done anything about it. And after word that we were going to form a coalition to start these attacks, the attacks actually accelerated with 15 drone attacks against Israel, which were intercepted, fortunately, over the weekend. Two more missile attacks today. I'm afraid we're getting to the point where there has to be an aggressive attack against these missile sites in Yemen to protect shipping in the Red Sea. General Holt, we've seen very little to no deterrence on the part of the United States. We're seeing no apparent offense, only very little defense. But at the same time here at home, our border is wide open. Are these two things connected when it comes to potential terrorist activity here in the United States? They absolutely are. I'm so glad you brought that up because we have a common denominator in these perils. The common denominator is a weak national security team, incompetent, maybe malevolent, uh, that uh, has been in the same seats since the Afghanistan disaster, and the world views them as dangerous. Go back and listen to what uh, Secretary Austin's words were. Very mild. He called it reckless. We're destroying nine ships. We call it reckless. We have an array of U.S. forces there that if they don't have a rules of engagement to engage, they're now at risk, especially if we don't have a deterrent. And then by contrast, thousands upon thousands in Arizona and Texas are just walking across. These people are fighting age men, most of them. And we don't know what their designs are here while terrorism bubbles up in the Middle East. Why do people think that this war is only going to be over there if we continue on the posture that we are and we refuse to recognize our number one defense priority. Well, General, we bring up a lot of great points, so let's switch to that topic right now. Uh, T.W., I want to get your reaction to Senator Lindsey Graham and making some frightening comments. They are, but it's the reality here when it comes to that crisis at the border. Let's take a listen. Our border is a national security nightmare. They chose bad policies. It's bit them in the ass, and we're not going to continue these stupid policies. I've never been more worried about a 9-11 than I am right now, and our border has been obliterated. That's scary to hear, T.W., but that's the reality. It, it is scary, and it's what all Americans know. I will say I am glad to hear that Lindsey Graham is now on the right side of border security, because I remember <laughs> that. I'm old enough to remember when he was talking about amnesty for illegals. Listen, America is the greatest country the world's ever known. People are trying to get here for a reason. There's a reason people in Afghanistan were trying to cling on to airplanes to try to get here. This is the greatest democracy in the world, greatest uh, constitutional republic in the world. And the reason people want to be here is because we have the freest country in the world. The only way that remains is if we keep our border protected. So Congress needs to act, and we need to have, uh, frankly, national guard, guardsmen at the border. Anything less is, is, is really a disservice to the American people and to our Constitution. To keep our republic free, we've got to have a strong border. We need to close the border immediately. And I'm glad that Democrats now are saying the same thing, even in these liberal cities. But we know that it's only because of uh, the election season. The minute where we get past the elections, they're going to be right back to open borders like they've always been. All right. Great observation.